what's going on, guys? I am the one, the only, the WO. Okay, I E joined here by Mr. Ewok Jr. What's going on, JR? Hello, Keyforge community. Glad to be here today for an amazing match between two great decks. So just so you guys are kind of aware and we're kind of very transparent here, this this game was filmed and now we're actually coming over the top. Neither of us have watched it yet, so we kind of kept it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Z, well, Z was there, so Z watched it. Um, I don't know if Dan's watched it, but you and I both have kind of like shied away from it, not wanting to watch yeah, it. I have not seen this. So because we don't, you know, we don't want to know what's going to happen, obviously, ahead of time. Um, cause that might get rid of some of the fun reactions, but we're going to have Zeta drive versus Bahamut. Um, JR, any sort of predictions you got for us today? We got Zeta drive up on the screen. I think you can, yeah, you can see that. Yeah. Um, in an odd piece, I'm actually going to go ahead and say that Zeta drive is going to take this two one and I'm making this bold prediction based on, I have an AOA deck that has grump buggy pile of skulls and i can just see how how much you're able to go ahead and utilize those artifacts and when i'm looking over at bahamut i'm not seeing a solid artifact control in the form of destruction and so with those artifacts being able to be out i think that is going to be absolutely key here um it's odd because to go against the triple control of the week um there, there's just some straight up amber rush that I can see coming from Bahamut, but I think that Zeta, if it can go ahead and push off just a little bit and get those key artifacts, I think that it's going to get the edge. I think the biggest thing we do have to remember here is that Grump Buggy works both ways. Uh, Bahamut does have things like uh, the Terror in there that are going to, I don't think he's got a ton, but he's got the Terror, he's got Overlord, Grekin, he's got, got Tentacus, uh, he's got Dodger. Oh, excuse me, he's got Dodger, so that's going to affect it. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I look at this piece. I think that Bahamut's got some great early calls with the double terror. I think that uh, it really has the ability to push um, with Amber. But when you're looking at Relust, it's got triple Relentless Whispers. And the problem is, if this damage destroys that creature, and when you're really looking at Zeta Drive, Zeta Drive has some big fatty creatures that are there. Um, yeah. and it has it in two houses. It has double exhum, and then it has the ability for logos just to absolutely fly. And, and I kind of pointed this out. Um, speed, I think, is going to be more important than control in this game. If you know, it's just my hypothesis, my prediction, but the 23 speed is pure speed with the lab work, double uh, sloppy lab work coming from Zeta it can really just absolutely move Zeta. Um, I also think that Zeta has, with Double Ganger and Drummer, it has a chance um, with Key to Disc to wipe a board and you know set itself up very, very nice for mm -hmm. some quick Amber Burst too. Yeah, Zeta is a lot like, I think it's Sasha, if I'm remembering correctly. Again, another Grump Buggy, like Pio Skulls, Iron Obelisk. Um, Drummer Knot, Ganger Chieftain. This Zeta got all the good stuff from AOA. Like, literally all of it. Um, I don't think it's got many dead cards in it. And Tropic Swirl um, might be one of the few dead cards I see in here. Um, you know, Ketodis, Life Ward, Gub is kind of okay. Um, Gub would be one of those targets. Helper Bot's going to be a target. Igor is going to be a target for those Relentless Whispers. Um, I See, what's, what's interesting, you said in Tropic Swirl is a dead card. I see that as the ability to do damage out of... The other two houses that is the only damage dealing card that i saw in yeah. logos and that could be very important with the triple control of the week um th you you got a picture that bahamut has double ember imps mm -hmm. um, which could be a restriction and kind of something that caused a little bit of an issue so I, I don't know i actually like entropic it can gain some amber too so i have no problem using it offensively to take out a key creature or frankly put it on one of my creatures and then go ahead and take some amber yeah We'll have to wait and see. Uh, we should get game one coming up here. We're just going to kind of fast forward through. We got game one coming up here right now. Right meow. It's on the screen. So opening up, I'm looking at Nathan's hand Ooh. right away. I see Control of the Week Arise, Terror. That Terror is juicy. He might consider take keeping that, but I really think he's probably going to deep six it. And I think Zeta sitting with Pile early on, Flamethrower, Sound the Horns, and a Groggins. Oh, man. For me, that's a really nice opening hand. You got Amber Imp 2. 
Uh, you got some Igor for yeah. a little bit of search. I, say, I think I, I think, think it's going to be Igor. Zeta Igor is open. Uh, he got yep. the opening hand, didn't he? Nope, he decided to oh, mulligan. He, Never mind. Mulligan. That's a surprise. This is, wh- this is why they are, uh, <laughs> you know, Vault Tour winning players and right. much, much higher competitive. I would have I gored it up, taken my card, see if I couldn't have gotten another Brobnard card and really Brobnard hard. So he ends up going Logos. Uh, Zeta throws down Helperbot with key to disc. Great board wipe, the ability to sit, and without a way to blow it up. There is usage, though. Let's see what Corey does. I'm interested. I'm, I'm assuming, well, yeah, I'm assuming he goes... Oh, man, that's kind of tough. I'm, I'm really surprised he didn't mulligan that hand. I, I realize it's a tough hand to mulligan, being a 4-1-1. Oh. Yep, he's going to just go... I'm assuming he's going to just discard the Arise, yep, and I'm assuming he's going to push him back into Logos, yeah. which would not be a bad idea. Turn one's always risky with the Control of the Week because, you know, you get, any other turn you get kind of an idea of what they're going to do. This, not so much. He played two cards, two different houses. He controls the Week him into Dis, so not not going to see much there. He does have a dead Exhum and a dead Poltergeist, but it does, does get him a couple Embers, so... That's going to be about it. I think we're going to see out of that. Tentacus is going to hit the board. And that's, I mean, that's kind of an interesting turn. I, I really thought he'd just send him back in a Logos. Because <clears throat> Poltergeist is dead right now. There's no artifacts. I don't even know if Zeta Drive, or I'm sorry, if uh, Bahamut has an artifact in it. I didn't look, but uh, it's either way, it's not going to be useful. Interesting. Did he just play there. a card and pass? He, he played Tentacus, and he kept both the Exhum and the Poltergeist. And for me, I was looking at, I would have used the Ketis right there, blown it up, um, actually played, uh, then played the Poltergeist and Exhum my Tentacus. I don't know. Yeah, because this allows That's Corey to key. Terror again, which yep. he, he got the second Terror off. Uh, dead charrette, but hey, what are you gonna do? You know, I, I I think Coda is the burn and turn set. So you mean you gotta burn it and you gotta go, you know. So oh, he does have one. He's got an anomaly exploiter. So I guess Corey's yeah. probably gonna have to watch out. Nathan's gonna have to watch out for the poltergeist, but I'm assuming he plays it here. And again, interesting. He goes back into this. Oh, he just wipes the board. Plays the Poltergeist, and then going to exhume back. I don't know what he's going to do. Probably the Helper Bot? Helper Bot, just be well. Yeah, Helper Bot, <laughs> and then play, yeah, I was going to say, probably one of his Brabnars. And, yep, and away we go. So, very interesting. That's giving up the key there. The board was yeah. getting a little out of hand, so I suppose you really don't have a choice. And this is kind of nice. He's got the Twin Emission Bolt to uh, zap both of those. Get those out of the way. Neuro siphon to steal. Can't, oh no, he doesn't get to steal any amber, does he? Off of the neuro siphon, because he had more technically. Don't forget, Bahamut's pretty fast too. No, it's Bahamut a, actually has the speed. Bahamut will has an expected a twenty five amber. Yeah, it's got a little um, bit of speed to it though. I, I can't remember what it was, but Bahamut. Bahamut is a uh, eight and a half. Eight and a half. So. Not as much speed, but it's it's got a little bit of speed to it. And the big problem right now is Zeta's not finding creatures. Yeah. He's not finding any of his big, juicy creatures, really, to make the obelisk. I mean, he's got Grump Buggy and Pile in hand, but no creatures, really, to do anything with. Um, he's got the Exhum, so um, we'll see if he decides to go into that. I'm assuming so. Nope. He goes with the Entropic Swirl, doing a little bit of work there, actually. Um, yeah, just clears the board, calls it a day. Uh, Down a full key at the current time. So I, I think this is kind of the cur- the curious <laughs> case of, of Bahamut popped off and Zeta's just it, it's not able to make that recovery. Correct. And and to be honest, I think at this point with the cards that have been played, Zeta is just in a really big world of hurt for this mm-hmm. game. 
yeah, I mean, even if he goes, well, yeah, he's going to go grump buggy. Yeah, but that's it's going to make him pay the full seven. But that's still going up. Oh, now, he, oh, because he's damaged. So he captures one. Oh, no, Iron Obelisk. Iron Obelisk. So I said, these artifacts are huge for Zeta. Yeah. But looking over at Courtney, I mean, looking at Bahamut had um nice little shadows piece with <laughs> you got bait and switch routine job yeah lights out to be able to return it's got some options and it's just moving so that yeah thing. now he's taking him off a key even if he yeah. does drop ganger down again and deal a damage to him it's it's kind of it's not gonna happen he's gonna get probably get this key either way um i don't see any other ember solutions in his hand um, I can't click on his discard pile to find out, but uh, I think in Tropics, the only one he's got in there that would really help him, but that's really no way to get that back right now. And he's going to exhume a helper bot to get the ganger down. Yeah. And then he's going to... I say, I can't imagine he's going to ready and fight with helper bot. No. Not finished with you. Yep, get the bonus. Yeah, he's got to. He's got to do some work here. He's got to get those keys rolling, because I fully see a. Yeah, he's gonna go in. I think Corey's gonna go. Nathan's gonna go into shadows. I keep switching between Corey Thin and Nathan, but he's gonna probably yeah shadows. He's just oh. gonna take him off of a key. Get that double ember. Steal one with urchin. And Number put himself two. really close back to check. Yeah, he's not going to be able to stop the key, but that did some work there. And is that? I think that's the second routine job we're going to see in his hand. So he's going to be able to steal two, uh, probably, because I'm assuming we're going Logos this turn. Yep, big Logos turn. Um, he's going to be able to steal another one and gain, you know, for the two Ember Swing. Off a of Relentless this turn, plus a couple of Reaps. This just looks like, it looks like one one high-rolled, one, well, I can't say Bahamut really high-rolled. I, I don't, I think there were some choices here. Um, yeah. But it just looks like Zeta kind of slow-rolled. He's, he's looking, looking for something. Car. Yep. I don't know what he's looking for, but he pointed at two cars and I wasn't paying attention. Sound the sl sloppy web works on the horns. That's what he was referring to. A life ward was played. No creatures coming in. I yep. don't think that's that's not going to be an issue. It's not an issue at all. The big question now is what, and I think almost yeah, a hundred ten percent control. Corey with, uh, should go three control fights. three fates. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. I mean, you get rid of the Gengar, you get rid of the Titan mechanic, and then his Igor. Not an ideal solution there. But you get rid of those three, send them back into Logos. Chances are he doesn't have any Logos. He's just got, what, a lab work up there? Yeah, we can see that he's got the lab work. Yep. Uh, but if I'm if I'm sitting in Nathan's position, I kind of think, hey, he just he blew the lot on, on Logos this turn, so there's a yeah. really good chance he's got none. He does have library to be able to draw, but it's yep. uh, we know what that card is. There's one card that's left. I was going to say seven. He's got, oh, he's got one card in his draw. Yeah. I thought it said seven, but he's got a bunch yeah. in his archive. I don't know what he archived. Does he have seven in his archive? Had, no, I can't see that. I can't see that Super either. clear. Yeah. Yeah, Corey does go dis here. He uses three yeah. fates. Clear the board up a little go. bit. Send him back in a... Did he send him back in a Logos? Oh, did no, he made him diss. go to dis. Yeah. Very interesting. I don't know. Maybe... Well, I, you know, again, I don't know what he archived. So that's a big deal. And I'm actually going to for you guys. I just realized it. Sorry. Somebody's going to put this in the comments. Uh, do, do, do. We're going to 
the filters and we'll just kill the crop pad. There you go. You should be able to see that a little bit better now. We're going to change it up. Screen's going to get kind of tiny and then it'll get big again. So. So going ahead and bringing out Gub and Schuler. Schuler <laughs> dropping, stealing one. And but now he's got now, the two. Yeah, Gub also makes, now that he's on a flank, not on a flank, he's Correct. Five, so, so he has to go ahead and have. I think that was a real interesting choice there. But again, I don't know what's sitting in his archives. Correct. I wasn't paying attention. I am fairly certain that uh, we've been talking about a misplay with Control of the Week, and I think that was what we saw there. Yeah. Corey, you're a phenomenal player, so it's very humbling to know that it can happen. But let's see. Does that open up an area for Zeta to come back? I don't know. It's still a really, really big ask. Yeah, I... Well, he forces him into Diss here. Because he has to choose Diss. And I'm just wondering. Control the weak into Diss. So. He's played those two. I'm guessing his turn is over? Let's find out what's going on here. Because we got some either some thinking going on. Or we're going to kind of fast forward here. Okay, so we saw some. Poltergeist. Uh, what to use maybe with the Poltergeist? Yeah, it takes out the he's Anomaly gotta, well, Exploiter. Well, it has right? to be the Anomaly Exploiter. It's the only thing he's got left. Or only thing he has, I should say. Yeah, it's the only piece that he could have. Gets rid of the Psychic know. Bug, which makes sense. Don't want him the looking at your hand all the time, because looking at your hand plus uh, Control of the Week is not fun. So what's really interesting, and this is where you start to see the idea of grunt buggy plus pile of skulls right it just can become if you don't have a way to be able to deal with it it can become overbearing so the idea of oh i have those two five plus power well, creatures I was gonna say, but here's the deal back. he's gonna routine job for two now yeah he's gonna relentless whispers um the martian archaeologist to feel to take out the, the gun. researcher yep. to take that out reap there and i just discard the nexus well, he's going to play it. But I at that point, knowing Gangrenot's out there with Pile of Skulls on board, as Z is pointing that out for me, thank you. Um, yeah, I discard Nexus and say, you you can only capture one from me. Because now you see it, he's got Gangrenot in hand. Yeah. So now he's going to fight the board and just go bananas. Yeah, he's got Ganger Drummer. Yeah, so now it's, I mean, that's going to be a big comeback for him. However, I don't know if that's going to... Well, let's see. One, two, three, four. So keys cost plus four, plus five. He's got the Iron Obelisk to put He's some damage on. He's got Iron Obelisk to put some damage on. So that's plus six, at least. Uh, we'll, we'll say plus seven. Yeah. For the current You're seeing time. Four, four creatures there, plus one out. So you got yeah. five. And then a, plus he, he's got Pile of Skulls, which is going to capture one every time. Yep. A, well, it's going to at least capture two. So that's going to be a... That, I think at max a plus nine. Because now he's going to fight with Cow Fiend. Take him out. That's going to capture one on Cow Fiend. Play the drummer knot to return the ganger. Play the ganger to ready the drummer knot. Put some damage on him. He's got the... Oh, he didn't have both. Did he have both? No, he didn't. I thought he had two... I thought he had both uh, Gengar Chieftains in hand. Guess not. No, he just had one. He just had the one, but now he returns Gengar, and we're gonna we're gonna rule a six that bad boy. Um, I don't know how many he's got left, but and reap returning Gengar, play Gengar, ready and reap. So let's see, we got two creatures with Ember on them, so that takes him down. Yeah. So literally his key snout cost he was one away. Which is kind of crummy, but um Yeah, ne Nexus was a big Oh, and with no way of gaining Ember right now. That's kind of huge. Um And he's gotta put a creature out really to Yeah, no way of gaining Ember right now. 
And if he, I think that last play, if he doesn't, if he sends him into Logos, game, it's game over. I think. I agree. I think that it was Logos earlier was game over. I think not playing the Nexus was game over. We'll have to see how this continues to come out. Interesting. Why? Yep. I don't know why he's playing creatures. Uh, well, it clears out his hand. Sure, so he had we're, the we're he had a slippery the, slope right now. I mean, yeah. he, can he had the face shift. Yep, he can go into dis, or he can. I mean, I don't know why he doesn't go anywhere but Brabnar right now. Kill the two creatures, capture another two. I mean, you have Cow Fiend who is undamaged. Kill the archaeologist. Send Grogans into Dodger. Dodger. Kill Dodger. And then just rule a six it. I think he played the Dodger, the Dodger just to get the plus one. Yes, and I, that's what I was going to, is I think the Dodger being played there is to keep him off check, which I'm fine with. It also is a bigger target that he's going to have to put some damage on right. some of his brother. Well, here's where you're talking about that Relentless Whisper is kind of being dead right now. There's not yeah. a lot going on, but depending on where the damage sits, uh, because if he does attack into... Um, the researcher down there, it's going to be, that's going to put three on him. So that, that two all of a sudden becomes a lot less. So, yep. There's the fight with Grogans to the Dodger. I'm assuming we're going to see Cow Fiend go into. Otherwise. Oh, you broke you up put there. It I was almost seeing, is there one damage on the Ganger? There's one damage on the Ganger. So I could see doing it with Ganger. Yeah, he put it on Cowfiend, mm. and I'm fine with that. The thing is, it just it make, does make that Relentless Whispers live. So I don't know if I Relentless Whispers here, or if I... Both games right, right now. now. You can't, yeah, because he's gonna go just through the roof. Yep. Does Zeta have? Uh, sorry, does Bahamut have major scaling amber? It was just the two routine jobs. Yeah. No, quite I a don't bit. Think it's got any, I don't. It doesn't have a too much to protect or anything. Yeah. No. It's just got it has the uh, Charette's urchin bait and switch. Got bait and switch. Which this this bait and switch when this one it's vault tour it's. It was, uh, and actually it didn't even win its vault tour, but when it was going, when it went into the vault tour in Seattle, bait and switch was pre errata. Yeah. And oh, how this game has switched. This yeah. is a pretty oppressive uh, board oh, setup. Yep. Oh, Coming back in. So oh, but that arise. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's double arise with no discard. Oh, that's painful. And Nathan's just fighting for this third key. I mean, can he last another turn, though, is the question. And I don't know the answer is yes. Because <laughs> I see, well, I mean, a lot of fighting going on there. Um, He's got quite a bit of damage. Yeah, I was going to say, he's, he's going to have to fight. He's got some damage. So I don't know if he necessarily can afford to fight. Well, right, right now, I think target number one's got to be that Ember Imp. You're going to have to do something about it. So I don't what is, know if it is. I, just, I think he might just stick with... Why not just stick with Brabnar Reap for one, two, three, four, five? And basically say, pull me off. Yeah, and, and tell him, you got to pull me off. I mean, which he knows he can do. Well, because it'll put him at nine, and then that's Overlord and Tentacus. So he only needs to be able to pull one more creature that would be large. Now, I know both of these decks are pretty small on their board size. Yeah. Um. So he fights there. Kaufin dies. Okay. Oh, we had, a couple, we had another fight in there somewhere, didn't we? Yeah, it looks like Calphine, and then Calphine uh, Cal uses the two damage to each neighbor. Ah. And then Pile of Skulls, again, continuing to capture Amber. And then uses Ganger to make Ganger fight Overlord. Yep. 
So he loses one of the gangers, but he's still fine with drummer, ganger, right. dragons, and he's at that seven, should. And his keys are going to cost him 12. Yeah, I was going to say, is it 12 or is it going to end up being 13? But he could damage his ganger with the flamethrower and call it a day. Now, the big deal here is... Let's see. So what he can arise? I don't know. What yeah, he that's it. That's exactly when you're talking with uh, the arise having the rise. The arise isn't going to do anything. He's only got it's, three, two big creatures in discard. Correct. And so it's that's not gonna only going to make his key at eight. Yeah, you go shadows with bait and switch and relentless whispers, and basically but you don't have enough. GG. Yeah. Wow, wow, that was a big misplay. I didn't, you know, I know Z's been talking yeah. about it, but that was a big, big misplay there um wow well, but, but look at that final board state when you're looking at having seven artifacts yeah and both rob and her artifacts can do some work um i didn't see the flamethrower or gauntlet really being used but you can see the idea for iron obelisk pile and grump buggy so wow yeah i think the I, I think the idea on that one is to uh you know obviously get some damage on your guys but not too much you know, flamethrower sure. is real nice to put that one on somebody just to when your iron obelisk is out just to get it going. We're gonna kind but of what if, yeah. The the deck that I actually run for adaptive has flamethrower, grump buggy, and um, pile, and I love that combination. So to even being able to put in um, iron obelisk would be great. <laughs> a little right. extra, and it's something that people just don't know. You need a board wipe, and again, not seeing that board wipe is huge. Mm -hmm. So well played. Um, and you said that was Z over in piloting uh, Zeta. No, um, I'm pretty sure. Yes, yeah, uh, Fabug. <laughs> Fabugus. I apologize for for not saying the actual name. Though. Yeah, no, he was the. Uh, I don't. This isn't a winning deck. This is an AOA deck, so it's not a Vault Tour winning deck. Correct. But it was um, because obviously with their, the. The way European Vault Tours it. were different from our Vault Tours, where we played Adaptive, they played just straight best of three. So let's see where we open up with Double Ember Imp. That's not going to be fun for someone. Um, yeah, with, with an Arise to be able to hold on to that after right. and control the weak. On the other side, you're seeing Zeta coming out with a Ganger Pile Poltergeist. Yeah, that Poltergeist really is probably the only dead. card I don't want to see in that hand. Correct. The Wild Wormhole, Helper Bot, and Lab Work. Everything else so, in Zeta looks real good. Yeah, and with the ability to go ahead and actually play Lab Work and archive that Poltergeist, I think I see where I'm yep. Where I'm going. Yeah, I think you 100% go Logos. But Nathan's going to go first, and that's what's going to put the damper on the party is, is that Ember Imp. Um, two cards. No response to it. Yeah, I can't really do much to it. I mean, you're you gotta just go Brobnar there and just play out the Ganger Chief in the pile. Cause Logos ain't gonna help you. Let's see what he does. I'm interested. He goes Logos, so it's more ding for a card and then plays that and then plays the Ganger? Oh, he plays the pile. Okay. Huh. Huh. Interesting. And we don't have them with us. So I don't know if that's necessarily a misplay or not, but I'm I'm guessing it wasn't. I got to assume Nathan. Some er yeah, some early thinking here. Wow. Well, and I think what he's really trying to avoid there is that control of the week. Making sure he has cards from every house to play. Or you have I don't know if pile as an artifact is going to be considered a house that he can play, but well, just having something to do on your turn other than making it a debt just a totally yeah. pass go turn. Yep, there's the second ember imp. I don't know. Do you hold that arise? You might want to. I think I lean towards that right now. I, yeah, I, I kind of think you hold that arise, control the weakum into something. 
Yeah, you're, I, you're I would still, almost say control the weakum into logos. Yeah, because you're seeing Fabregas really having a difficult time getting rid of one Ember Imp, right? Let alone two here. And, and logos is the house with the smallest creatures, I think, besides for the Titan mechanic. Yeah. So he didn't control the weakum. He said go. Ooh, took his Ember. That's an and, interesting and choice. So uh, Nathan did go ahead and hold on to the rise and the control. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, the control here does not get him to check. So he plays. And... So he goes into logos, plays the two. Um, I'm assuming that that lab works discarded. So he wild worm holds. Oh no, he does the library. Okay, so yeah, he. I wish I could scroll through that. I'm assuming and... he did not control him, but he went logos anyways. And a couple quick turns here. So Corey comes back and basically goes dis immediately, goes reap, reap, and then now plays the control of the week into logos. He's going to relentless his own guy. Yep. He relentless his own guy to try to set up the terror. Yeah. And it goes ahead and puts him at check. Check for seven. Yeah. I think he's trying to set up his terrors. Yeah. What is interesting is Fabregas has, because of all those artifacts that we saw earlier, they do take up space, and he, he doesn't have a big board there. So looking back at the stats, he, I want to say the board strength was set at 60, and you can see that where there's just a number he's lacking in the creatures. Yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, he, okay, so he goes Brabnar. He's going to play Buggy. Basically make him pay full cost. Yep, and then he's going to play the Ganger. Seven. Making okay, making pace a full seven. That's and that's fine. It is fine, but those two ember imps coming from Nathan are still massive issues. Yeah. So Nathan returns with his logos going yeah. ahead and now taking a peek. I think I think what he's saying is deal with them, and and the deck has not been. I mean, Ganger is going to be able to kill one ember imp, but I mean, there's still one out there. You know Correct, what I mean? I so it's still a problem. But I think this play of Psychic Bug is really undervalued because it gives him actual information as to what's in his hand. Yeah. So it, it can also now be because uh, Nathan has a triple control of the week. Hey, I have information. So it is just now looking at it going, I've kept each of the houses, so I don't have a dead turn. But while seeing that hand, do you go ahead and just force him into Logos and say... He doesn't have a control of the week in hand, though. I, I know, so. but I'm like... He discard he discards Tesmol for the polter. Okay, discards Tesmol for the polter guys. No, that yep. that makes sense because he wants to. He, I think he's still trying to avoid that terror because he's only, he's only at one. So one steal and the terror is live again. So we need to get out of that area. Gonna go logos. And here's a reap sense. to see that hand he's again. Gonna see the hand again. That's why I'm like, Psychic Bug is brutal here. Because mm -hmm, no he just continues response. to find out. Yep. Oh, and it, I forgot the Ganymede Archivist lets you... Lets you <laughs> it lets you archive a card. So he archived his... He archived his Arise. Totally forgot about that. And then the bug is going to reap, obviously, I would assume. He bolted. Just sitting with that terror, terror. Like, oh no, he yeah. just killed it. He just said, "I'm just gonna kill the kill the ganger knot," which is, I guess, I don't know. I don't know if I do that. He's well, I suppose because if yeah, you're gonna twin bolt. Well, yeah, he used twelve. He killed the ganger chieftain, which I'm like, do I do that? But yeah, you're you're worried about ganger knot. Um, so kill the ganger chieftain, make him go out of house to exhume. Oh man, this is brutal. And Nathan pulls the three fates. He's got to kill his own card, though. Do you even bother? I mean, you're basically you're waiting for him to kill that Ooh, bug. life ward here. No. So no, I don't. No, so no creatures. So you just go back into logos. Reap with the uh, play the anomaly exploiter. Reap with you've already seen the poltergeist, so you don't got to worry about it. Reap with the archivist. Uh, put your three fates back into your. Put your three fates archive. in your archive. Draw two cards. 
I think that's the best play. That makes him, I mean, again, he, he's got to deal with the Ember Imps. And the problem is he's going to kill that Ember Imp. And the second he does, that Arise is going to pop out. Yep, and here goes Logos. Yeah, that Anomaly Explorer is going to be crucial in this game. And, the the, oh, to a bit and he pulls out two discards. That's that's brutal. And Very nice. Buggy's well, gonna what's sp- really brutal is is the Charette. So Charette, if he doesn't go above, if uh, Flabbergast doesn't go above three, he can go ahead and Charette, and then the t- double terrors are live for mm-hmm. Big Amber Burst. And then the Arise that's there. Oh. And and the thing is, he's only allowed to play two cards right now. Yep. So does Exhum Read put into play? That'd be my question is how Exhum Reads. He goes ahead and plays Gub. He plays the Exhum. That puts him at three. Right. But is he going to be... Oh, no, he's not going to be able to play... Wait, what just happened there? Uh, Tentacus uh, fought Oh, Tentacus the fought an Emperor Imp. Okay. Which, does, which, frankly, doesn't really matter. Yep, then the Ganger's coming out. Yeah, which is fine, which yep. which is weird. All of this is fine because now three fates is very, very live. Yeah, he did get above that three. So the charrette, the charrette doesn't do anything, but that's I mean, let's, that's OK. Yeah, I mean, I think this is. This has got to be a disc call, right? I, I do you see anything so. else? No, I, I, I don't know why I do anything else. You've got two in archive. You've got a five card disc turn. Yeah, you don't get the awesome charrette play. You know, charrette. Uh, charrette the only piece play, is but... because of key to discs out there. Maybe. Um. Well, here's so, the deal. So maybe, maybe go. I mean, that that's the only piece right now. Because if he goes ahead and plays three fates, wipes that board, and then lays out his whole disc, it's just going to be key to disc to wipe it back. Mm-hmm. This is true. Do you try and go... How do you play. bait that key, though? Yeah, no, Charette's he's going to go. Charette's a good way to bait that key. He left it in archive, though. So he's going to play the big board. Yep. He's going to let him key to this. Key to and this. Then pull it back. Okay, so that's the bait right there. Here, yeah, Here's your bait. You know, three five power creatures making your key cost nine, and I have three of your ember. And I will say that takes some discipline to be able to sit back and say, I'm not arising right here. Yeah. So see, key to this. Fine, use it, but then I'm going to come back. For all of that control that Nathan had with the double ember, he only was able to walk away with one key. Now, he is up one key because it's one amber to three amber right Right. now, but there were a number of turns of just a single or two-card play. Right. Right. So we got a logos oh, okay. call from Flargus going ahead and pl- uh, uses memory chip to archive. Look at that. Library of Babel to draw. Plain Fila. Fila. Cutthroat not working right now. Not not live currently, but and then a sloppy to kind of. And the Cutthroat day. is a nice piece in this deck where yeah. you can push the, the key cost up higher. Wow, drawing mm. another big logos hand for Flargus. Hmm, I think at this point he just goes shadows and keeps burning. Play the Nexus, play the Dodger, steal one. Why not? Or, I mean, or you could even or, go, you can go Logos too, it, but he's like, I think it's, I, th- I thought it was Dis, and the reason being is Reap for four and then play out. Oh, he comes He back comes and the, takes his archive. I don't know about that, but again, better player than I am. I would have called Dis, I would have Reaped, and I would have thrown out Overlord. And I would have done that so that I can bait that key. Yeah, to we're death. trying to bait that key, which is my assumption. Or unless he wants that, I would say he might have wanted just wanted the three fates to really skew that board one way. So now that he's got, I, I, I'm going to tell you, probably keeps that arise. Yes. Plays the overguard, yeah, and he keeps the arise, holds the arise. 
Going big with 10. Because now, look, you got a board of five. He's got to do something about that board, which is going to be the key. Yep. I mean, look, his keys are costing 10. This uh, this grump buggy is really working against Zeta. And it can do that. There, There's definitely no question. Little talk on the side. Yeah. She is elusive. <laughs> wah, wah. Yeah, he's not worried about it. <laughs> Say, don't, don't worry about it. You're fine. Just keep playing. You're you're gonna be up two keys, I would assume here. Two keys to none. Is there anything that Zeta can do to answer? You got to play logos here, right? There's have, nothing you have, else. You have Schuler. <laughs> but that's about. I mean, no, not really. No, you, you got to be able to turn with that logos. Yeah, and and you can see in the chat. Uh, Fabregas is, is saying that arise. He knows it's there. Yep. He's not dumb. He he knows it's it's got to be in there. I mean, why else? I mean, but he's he's really got no other choice but to pop it. I mean, what do you do? You go into logos, play four, and tropic swirl it. I mean, oh, he's got some cards in dis and he has some cards in archive, but er, the yeah, there it is, the key to this. That's what I thought was gonna happen. And then Kaufin Drummer. Ready him. Reap with him. Kaufin. Or Kaufide, however you want to say it. Okay. So by, go by going with Brobner there, it forces the keys to go ahead and cost eight. A little bit more. Yep. So, I mean, that I can see. But that arise, though. Oh, yeah. If he, and if, because that, that arise forces him back to Brobnar. Yes, he's got the pile and the iron obelisk out. Hey, what? Hello? Yeah. You got me? Sorry, I, I lost you for it. Yeah, oh, I lost you first. I was going to say, that, that arise he's going to play is going to force him back to Brobnar with only one card to play in hand. An interesting Nathan taking a second key, so up two to zero. Uh, but he goes into Logos, and he's got Wild Wormhole phase shift. Yeah, so he's probably just going to phase shift into that Arise. Why not? I mean, it's a better play. Gets rid of another card. Wormhole gets you a free card. But no, he, he went this. Maybe I read it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, no, he went this. He Arise. Here yeah, I'm, I'm like, I would definitely be going this here. I, big, big you know, time. I almost might have just, well, I guess you got it. You can't play him if you go that way, but. Ember Imp, Ember Imp. Here's, here's lots of peoples. Lots of people. The problem is you're not getting a ton of value out of the double terror. No. You're also, because Charette's not pulling them all the way down to zero. I but mean, the, the thing you have to remember is the board wipe is gone. The board wipe is gone, so it's gonna force now him. Now it's gonna force him to deal with what two, four, six, seven disc creatures. Which, if if a grump buggy deck doesn't have board control or doesn't have a way to control the board, and the, the stuff like this happens, it gets out of hand. Because right now, and then you're gonna okay. So right now, <laughs> that grump buggy is really working against him. Ten is what his yeah. is costing. This is the odd piece where Grand Scraper at that alpha card actually has a way to, to have some impact versus mm -hmm. just being a complete dead card. Um, I think that this is hands down a Brobnar turn coming up. We'll have to see. Um, I don't see how it's not. I don't see how it's not either. Um, yeah, I don't see how it's not. I was say maybe you play no, I don't see why you play the Schuler. Um I see no reason. You to gotta play. find a way to get rid of the Ember Imps to deal with Yes. To deal to play anything really right now, so Is this a little bit of a mind game where there's a slight delay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Z. Going ahead and showing like, like I said, Z is Z is pointing it out for us, but yes, we know Z. We we've we've already spoken about it. 
He's uh, like I said before. He's he's pre-recorded these, so we are looking at it um, at, after after he recorded it because um, Nathan is West Coast. Yeah, Nathan's West yeah, Coast. Nathan's West Coast. And then we've got uh, Fab. Uh, say that again for me, Fabregus. Fabregus. He's overseas. Fabregus. I think he's. I, I think he's in Italy. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on that one. But so you got quite the quite the you know span between these two. And then the Genger to return the cow fiend. Nope. Yep. Okay, I was right on that one. Pile of skulls to capture one ember, placing it on. Scraper, cow fiend. Using gauntlet to get rid of that. That fiend. was a lot to do just to get rid of two cards. And now you got an anomaly exploiter, which you can blow things up. I don't know if he necessarily goes logos. I don't see why he wouldn't here. But we'll see what he does, because he's playing three cards either way. Yeah. Oh, he goes Shadows. Okay. All right. I figure blow up a, a, a Ganger Knot, uh, play the Phase Shift into something, you know, whatever you really want to play it into, and then Wild Wormhole. Unless there's something he's fearing in his deck from playing the Wild Wormhole, which is always possible. Okay. Relentless is a real thing. You still there, Mister uh, Mister Chair? Yeah, I'm still okay. here. Yeah, I'm looking. I mean, interesting being able to cycle into a little bit more logos. Um, nice amber control coming out with Dodger. Some steel fur. Virgin. And you've got everyone's favorite Dexter. Dexter. All right, so we're gonna go into kind of a eh, logos turn from Zeta. It's not a bad logos turn. But you'd like it to have a little more impact than it's going to. This, I mean, this late in the game too. You're down two keys to none. Uh, you need to do something yesterday. So, <laughs> but this is the piece. You're 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 at turn eleven right now. You're going ahead and seeing those artifacts. Long game. Zeta has the advantage. You want to just keep Bahamut off. Bahamut has the ability to rush. I think if this goes with, you know. Man, I don't know, man. Bahamut, the deeper Bahamut's getting, it's got tricks. You know what I, I mean? It does have tricks. I can't disagree. Z showing us a little bit of that discard. Vision on maybe the Entropic. Entropic to deal four damage to Nexus. Capturing one. And I do think Nexus, with the ability to use gauntlets, the ability to go ahead and use library. Oh, man. So what do we go? I mean, Z's shown us. I don't think I fear. I don't think there's anything to fear from a wild wormhole right now. Plus, you're going to pop something. Yeah, there's the logos turn. I was gonna say play play the wild wormhole. It's the Dexter. Nice. <laughs> That's funny. The top card of the deck is Dexter. Dexter Dexter. That's what he was afraid of, right there. The Dexter. Dexter. <laughs> yeah. Phase shift. I think what he was looking for was the the routine job. If he gets the routine job, he, he plays play another it. routine job. But he didn't have it, so I think you're probably just going to see him more than likely, I would assume, um, get rid of the Igor. Yep. Relentless Whispers to... Doesn't say. Oh, Did no, he just deals two damage that? to Drummer Knot. Oh, it does kill Drummer Knot. And then kill the other one. Why not? Anomaly Exploiter, that bad boy. Rocket boots to Overlord. That's a good play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Can't argue with that at all. Do you just yep. discard this Dexter? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I figured would. as much. I, I would, but... Uh... Well, it's just like, do you discard the Dexter? Do you just play him for funsies? It's, yeah, it, you discard him. No, you don't want to get a, looped into Dexter. Yeah, it's, it's not a funsies play. Uh, he got burned with the with the world hole into one. Unless you're taking your opponent off check, I just don't see that Dexter play. All right, here we go. We're, we're, I feel like we're in the, 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 the long stretch, but this is just game two. Two. Let's see. What are we at here right now? We're at uh, 46 minutes, so game three must have not been very long. Is there a game three? I think. Well, Ooh. that's that actually Ooh. is a good question. Is there a game three? I would assume so, but we'll find out. This game goes for another 20 minutes. Jeez. I don't know. There were a couple different plays early where, uh, what is it, Fabregas was down mm -hmm. two keys and came back. So you got it. I mean, that's there's a mountain this, to climb this here. Is, this is a really big ask. There's no Yeah, that's, that's a mountain to climb. That is a big ask. I mean, he's got the bait. He's got another Relentless Whispers. He's got a routine job. I don't see a reason for the penny to even be played. I mean, this, I think, I think this might be, I mean, obviously, depending on what happens, um, this might be the final turn. Turn 12. Going deep. Uh, babble, cutthroat. Yep, yep. So we're going into a dis turn, or a dis logos turn. To decide what he's doing. I mean, he does have sloppy and helper bot in hand. I say he's gonna play the helper bot. Just what does he play? Well, Can't really Schuller's play the Schuler. Schuler's yeah. not live, so I would assume it'd be the exhum. Yeah, that's where I am too. Because Gub is meh. Well, I guess maybe you could put the gub and then helper, unless you can cover up the gub. Bot. You but you could play the helper bot afterwards, but who cares? I don't need to protect the helper bot. Well, the helper bot's gonna play the gub, so he can't. You can't smush him in between something. He would be on a flank, so now he's just you, a one power yeah, creature. Right. So yeah. it's no reasoning for it. Yeah, uh, what did he do there? Makes Igor Fought fight Overlord, Overlord Grecking, giving him access to Igor. Hmm. He basically then graded. He took Titan to go ahead and get him out. And to kill the Overlord Grecking. Yeah. Okay. This is one of the more interesting turns. It is a different turn. Putting. I think right I now, now, I mean, still. He's... That's on the scraper. Yeah. And I don't think there's any way he doesn't get that ember back. Okay, plays the helper bot to play the exhum to get cow fiend. Okay. So I I'm seeing a dis turn dis uh shadows turn. You play the so bait and switch for your two. Yep. You fight uh your dodger into cow fiend. Or, I mean, you could routine job first, too. That's fine. Team. Dodger into Cow Fiend. Relentless Whispers. The no, helper uh, bot. Do do Dodger went into the scraper. Oh, oh I'm sorry, scraper. the scraper. That's what I meant to say. And then you Relentless Whispers, the helper bot. Yep. Because you get that four back. Yeah, if this is not... Did he hold the bad penny? Did? He held the bad... I don't think he think it's it's going to matter. Because he bumped up to 14. Right. So I think he just said, pass, go, get me off. And I don't think you can. And he really can't. <laughs> Going into a diss turn. Okay, life ward. I can, uh, you can make his keys cost another two, but that really doesn't help you. GG. Yeah, okay. So that was the uh the a pretty pretty dominating performance there. Three three zero. Coming into game three now. So yes, there is a game three. 
I knew there was a game three. You checking ahead. There's always a game. Well, I was just looking at the time. I was like, man, if this game, if this one game goes oh. another 20 oh. minutes, at what point do we go, oh, I think there's a time rule. So, the one game to determine it all, who's headed into the final four and who's, uh, well, we're all under quarantine. I'd say who's going home, but we're all home. We're all going so, home. So, doesn't really matter. Let's get into this. All right, so this is going to be a 2-1 split, whichever deck goes. I don't know, after that second game, I really, really think that Bahamut seems to have an advantage unless something else happens, because that was a brutal, brutal beating. All right, so Flabbergast coming in, being first player. He's sitting with a 4-3 split. He gets kind of a muh hand for his Brobnar. Igor, yeah, I think that was a mulligan. That's what I saw. What did Corey do over here with Bahamut? Looks like a mulligan as well, sitting with now five cards. Do I have you, Wookie? Did I lose you? We may have All lost right. Wookie. No, I'm here. Oh, All right. Let's see what's we going got... on. Okay, so we got into turn one already, and we got a sloppy. Yeah, so I, I was talking about hands, both mulligans. Um, Ooh, I do not like Nathan's hand at all, but he mulliganed. He mulliganed. That kind of sucks. It is, yeah, it, it is a bummer. Uh, still one. <laughs> yep. Let me gain some amber and throw out Nexus. There you go. That is a bummer, though. That's kind of, that's, oh, man. Triple Relentless Whispers and only half the value, or double Relentless and only getting half the value. Woof. Not my favorite use for Relentless yeah. Whispers. Yeah. yeah, oh, he said that in the chat. Yeah, for sure. No, woof. Half the value. Now, the big question here is, what does, uh, what do we got here going on here? Logos, I would assume? It's got to be a Logos. How do you not With do the gub? I mean, you get the gub out. No, don't get the gub out. Yeah. And Z is going ahead and politely circling the logos for us, yep. saying, please, please, please. So he likes to be able to use that helper bot to bring out his artifacts. Interesting piece. And I think Gauntlet coming out is a great piece because next Brobnar turn you have access to I music think the life. I think the helper bot into into artifacts. I think that's just been a happenstance. Like he just happened to have it. You know what I mean? Well, He's got seven artifacts. Yeah. Is that what I counted? Yeah. I mean, so. <laughs> but the, I, I mean, we look at artifacts. Artifacts have that issue where they're slow to be able to use. So if you can use Helperbot, bring it out in an off turn, and then use it. Yeah. It's it has a lot more value. Let's right, see so, this, which totally makes sense. Does not have the terror cracking out. control the weak into I would guess logos. What? Dis. Puts him in the dis. Oh, he I'm guessing that's the one where he's saying that was a big mistake. I got to imagine it was the game one mistake, because if he calls any other how if he calls, yeah, no, that's not what he was talking about. I, I don't know. I could see it on game one. I can see it here in game three. I mean, this game is only going to be 12 minutes, so. Did, did I see Z just go ahead and point to Dis over there. Oh yeah, he he totally he highlighted it in the chat and then pointed to it. So I'm I'm assuming he's you know just doing that now to be like question mark. I'm sure he's gonna send him the link to this game and just be like, what were you doing? <laughs> like what what did you do? I mean, this could be a landslide either way because if Fabregas gets really on board quickly, that the board can run away with it. You know what I mean? But obviously Bahamut can do the same thing where if it just, if it gets going quickly, it just kind of rolls, you know? I, and, I will say what I'm looking at from Fabregas though, is he's not drawing those creatures. No. And Brobnar seems to be key to be able to make. Here we go. A little psychic bug action. Let me see that hand. Going ahead and showing. Okay. 
And then we're going to zap that helper bot to make keys cost uh, minus one. Wild Wormhole always hits a Logos card. What did he wild? Did he Wild Wormhole? Oh, Wild Wormhole into the Exploiter. Okay. Which is fine. Where are the boots going? Where's your target? Uh, Nexus? I gotta assume Nexus? No. Overlord. Overlord? Oh, yeah. Overlord's out. It's just such a good, solid play. There you go. And we're at check. Oh, and he doesn't have much in hand to... He has, he has nothing. He has nothing He's to do gotta with He's got to just kind of so say, go and deal with it. So in that case... Oh, look at that shadow sweet. Yeah. That, that, oh, that'll be that's going to be tough next turn. Um, Relentless is kind of dead? Is Relentless a dead card? I mean, you're still going to get an ember off of it, but you're not going to be able to steal one. Which I don't think is honestly going to matter, because you're going to steal uh, two could... with bait. This is... I don't know if it's... Because you got bait that's going to go ahead, and two urchin. I, I think, yes, Relentless is a dead card. From Gets you an ember pip, I guess. And the board will be gone, so he's going to use his Gauntlet of Command to let somebody reap, which I guess would be the Psychic Bug. If he doesn't play any creatures. Yep, Entropic, the next... I think is he's telling us to Entropic, the Nexus. Look at that. Okay, Entropic. He's pointing to it. And he does nothing. <laughs> so... So Fabregas going with the disc, uh, choosing Gub to fight Overlord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give him the... Oh, dude, why do you give him the Gub, Gave it. Yeah. Interesting. Schuler is going to finish off the Overlord. Yeah, I don't know about that Gub. Schuler is going to steal there. one, but you got to cover up the Titan. Never mind. I guess uh, Nathan's just going to get a key at five. Well, and the other odd piece. I don't I don't know. I don't know that call. <laughs> and with the Shadows, the ability to go ahead and steal. Ugh. Yeah, and Shadows is big right here. And you can cover up your Gub to make him a five power critter, but I'm going to return both your creatures back to your hand. Yeah. So I'm going to steal two. I'm going to return both back to your hand. And then Nexus, the life ward. As you just saw Z point out to me. I was yeah. going to gauntlet and command it, but yeah, no, now that I see the life ward, 100% Nexus, the life ward. Make my gub nice and juicy. Lights out your critters. Okay. Let's whisper him to steal one, and Nexus to reap, and take the life ward. Oh! And that is check eight. That's actually, I think, the game, because look what's yes. in hand now. Well, maybe not game. It's going to be close. So yeah. this, this is the piece. With speed, you got to be able to get those cards back into hand. So the ability to hysteria, the lights out. Right. And with Nexus using the life ward, yeah, I... I... Oh, that's brutal. That is so brutal. And you knew he... I mean, he knew the Nexus was out. Got to go Logos here. I don't even know why you play the life ward in that situation. I, if you I know the know. Nexus is there. That just seems that seems like a misplay to me. I I agree, but I don't know. I mean, I I I cannot full full well put a life ward on board 
without knowing I'm killing that nexus. I'm I'm in a hundred percent agreement with you that if there is a way for it to be used, it's not being played. Not only that, you haven't seen much shadows being played from him in this game. I think a total of like two or three cards. Dis has been the dominant house. A little bit of logos, but not much shadows. You know there's a definite possibility he can come back into shadows. That's rough. Well, and the problem here with Fabricus is that by going logos, he can't really play the Titan mechanic because there's no way for him to cover it up. Mm-hmm. He also can't physically play it because of the life ward. So do you, do you use your slop? Uh, oh man, because that's, that's so tough. Have. You just discard. You, you can't. And move on. You gotta go with logos here to keep well, moving. He, he did. He disconnected then. Oh, I thought. Yeah, then, it says he's disconnected from the game, so it'll, yeah. it'll give it some time. Uh, but in here, you go. You gotta go. Oh, man, there's there's that's no so chance. tough because I mean. We haven't seen many creatures from him, so there's a really good chance that you wild wormhole into a creature and the wild wormhole becomes nothing. Of course, we haven't seen a lot of his artifacts either, so it could be an artifact as well. You're at least getting three cards off in Logos and not chaining yourself. Even if you want to hold Put that in trap. Fila's useless. You can get rid of Fila. What about the Entropic Swirl? Can't go ahead and use that either. Can he really give? I, I don't know. He's, he's reconnecting back here. I don't know. Little connection issue. He is in a bad spot. Yeah, he's in a really bad spot. Memory chip's coming out. Yep. Okay, so wild the wild remote does hit an artifact, good. which is fine. Good job. <laughs> well, you've, we've only seen what one, two of his seven. So five of five of the cards left in there are artifacts. So you had a good shot of it being an artifact. Uh, do Let's see. I think he's contemplating that entropic. I'm curious if he's contemplating creatures. I think they have to be discards. Yeah, discard yeah, of discard, Fila, discard Titan. Plays the Entropic to deal four to yeah, deal four to Nexus. You can't let Nexus run wild out there. And I think this is where Nathan says dis. Charette, Tentacus, Reap, Reap, send you back into Logos. He's going to forge a key first, obviously. Really wanted that cutthroat last turn. Yep. Oh, and no, this, BRB. What? And so this is the issue with, with all those artifacts. If they show up at the end of your deck, you know, you may have a fast deck, but if you if you don't get them out, it, it's it's game. Yeah. I also have to say that I think while Corey kind of uh, sorry Nathan um, allowed game one to go to Fabregas, I think that he could have had this in two games. There. Yeah, he could have had this in two. But let's uh, should we fast forward a little bit here? Oh no, never mind. There he goes. He said BRB, back. and then. But yeah, there's no reason yeah, not to do this. Oh my goodness, the, the the rich keep getting richer over here. Sends them back in a logos, right? Yep, send them yep. back in a logos. Archive your card. Play your couple of cards, which just so happens to be a cutthroat, which is kind of humorous. Cutthroat Igor, and then he. I don't see again. I don't see another reason for him not just to go stroll right back into dis. What are you looking for in there, Mr. Z? Oh, those are, he's showing us the discarded cards. Got it. Okay. And here's the disc. I, again, don't see a reason not to have a disc call. But he goes into shadows. Why not? Turn some cards. Yep. Throws it out at 
Yeah, it puts him to eight. So, yeah, that's that's not a bad call. No. I just figured well, reap for one, two, three, four, you know. So, so here, here's where my prediction was definitely dead wrong. It did go 2-1. Yep. Um, but that ability to have pamper just outweighs the control. Amber control is not enough. It didn't come long term. Yeah. Yeah. Fabregas well, is and Fabregas's Ember control all relies on Grump Buggy. Uh, most and of Pile. It. Yes. Yeah, and Pile. Grump, and, Pile. And, and Obelisk. And Obelisk. So, I mean, you have three cards, all artifacts. And he hasn't seen any of them. And he hasn't seen any of them. So, that, there you go. There's the problem. If you don't see any of those cards. Am I looking at this? How many cards are in that draw pile? Does it look like three? Three. So those are the final. Those three are the cards. final three cards. Are his I mean, artifacts? Yeah, he's just gonna start killing things here because there's honestly no reason not to. But the game's done. There it is. That's uh, that's game three going to Bahamut. Bahamut is nasty. Yeah. Well played. So that's uh, that's going to do it here. Bahamut moving on. Um, I'm not sure what we have for round three. I'm going to check it out here real quick. Don't mind my screen on there. Don't, don't, don't look. Don't look. But um, let's find out what we have for uh, round three here. If I can find it. Um, I believe the next one we're going to have up after this one uh, because who is it? It's gasoline going up against Bahamut, right? And then pink fraud going up against Inferno. Does that sound right? Pink fraud and Inferno. Let's get into here. Yeah, we're going to have gasoline versus Bahamut uh, coming up. This should be out. If you're watching this, it's probably Monday. Um, and then Gasoline versus Bahamut. Um, and then I believe I have the other video, uh, which is Inferno versus uh, Pink Fraud or or Admiral Isling, Ingslang, uh, which I should have all these up by the end of this week, hopefully, depending on what today brings. Um, and then we'll have our finals probably set for, I would assume, sometime next week. So, thank you guys all for watching. You got anything before we get out of here, Mister Mister Jr.? No, it was it was great seeing some competitive Keyforge being played, uh, some high level decks, and to see how they were um, piloted. I, I love being able to see that again. Amber, <laughs> Amber Rush, the actual ability to go ahead and have Amber. That's that's where this game is at. I can forge keys and the control three, the control of the week. Uh, triple Relentless Whispers didn't do much, but no. uh, I, I will say that overall, that Arise really... I think it really did was... enough. Oh, yeah, it did enough. You know, and... it's, it, did, it it came into key when it needed to, but man, that, that game too with we'll have to see double though, how, uh, Yeah, we'll have to see how in the next round uh, this fares, but... Yeah. Absolutely. Phenomenal piloting. So we'll get these games up for you guys. Again, this is the last of the Elite Eight. We'll be moving on to the Final Four on Wednesday, hopefully. Um, and then we'll kind of go from there. Final Four should be Wednesday, Thursday. And then we'll probably have to get something set up for our finals. So I'll get with the boys. We'll get all that figured out. And uh, we'll see you guys all next time.